Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. You read Acts 16 a little farther, and from this point on in the book of Acts, everything was they did, he did, he, those guys, them. And all of a sudden, you get halfway through this chapter, and the, and, the, and the dialogue changes, the narration. Anyone know what happens? From 16? No, from verse chapter 16 on? You start reading, and we did this, and we did that. Now, who wrote the book of Acts? Luke. I call the Gospel of Luke, Luke 1, and Acts is uh, Luke 2. You know, well, Luke continued. He says, the first account, I, I, I gathered all the information for you, Theophilus, what Jesus began to do and teach, and this is what happened after he rose, and this, you know, and this is, and he had collected all this information, but the narration changes from they did to we. So, you find out when you read just a little further into chapter 17, Luke is now traveling with Paul. So, he just went from, sorry Barnabas, we're not getting along, you go with John Mark, to I got Silas, now I picked up Timothy, then I pick up Luke, and you read chapter 17, and all of a sudden, Paul is now traveling with a huge company of fellows sharing the gospel. And he says, and my hands have attended to all our needs. He, he, he never asked for an offering. I love Paul. I mean, I know he wouldn't fly with American preachers, but he's, he's to me a man's man. He did not go, oh, if you don't give money, our ministry is going to go off the air and we're going to fall apart and you've got to send your donation and please, you know. He never did. He goes, look, my hands minister to the needs of myself and, this is something else, men, we can earn more than just what we need. And he said, and my hands have ministered to the needs of the men that are with me. And today, well, I, I don't have time today. Uh, next week, when I get back to Romans, and I tell you where Paul, Paul is going to say, guys, I wanted to come to you at Rome. But before I do, there's one thing I got to do. What, what did he have to do? He said, I got to bring this gift. There's, a, there's been a collection that the, the people in Macedonia have taken up. These dear saints in Macedonia, where Paul is just about to go to on this journey, have it in their heart. They're like, well, we received the gospel because of, well, you know, God, God letting, I mean, our, our Savior is a Jew. And if we receive spiritual blessings, we should at least help them out with some f material, physical blessings. And Paul's, Paul in Romans, when we go back to Romans, we're going to see in this very chapter, he says, before I get to come to you to Rome, i got to go back to Jerusalem because they gave me this gift. They took up a collection. I said, give this to the poor saints. And we heard they're really, and by the way, the church at that time, they're really getting a beating back in, in Jerusalem. The, 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 the Christian faith is not being standing ovation from the, from the Roman authority. Because you, you stand up and say, there is a king of all kings. King of kings, Lord of lords. And he's not Nero. Right? How does this go over in Roman thinking? They're like, kill him. Do, do, you, remember when, do you remember the fella who found out about the baby Jesus being born? There was a Roman guy there in Jerusalem. Herod. And, and what did he do? Oh, go, you three wise men, and find out where the baby is and, and, and worship, and, and come back and tell me so I too might go there and worship, right? Why did he want to go there? He wanted to kill, he wanted to kill him. He wanted to kill him. They weren't looking for extra kings. And the, the I mean, the Christian faith, we're proclaiming there is a king of all kings. A Lord of all lords. Jesus. Not too popular. So the church back in Jerusalem is suffering. 
they're, they're being, losing their, their houses, they're losing their jobs. They're losing, and the, the, here are these Gentiles that Paul's ministering to are hearing word from Macedonia, the very place that the Spirit called Paul to go to, which Paul did obey. He went there. If I had time, I'd take you to Corinthians. You know, 1 Corinthians, we, we, we read about how they took up the collection. Was that 1 Corinthians 9 and uh, 2 Corinthians 8? Let me see. Wait, no. I hate to say things wrong. It drives me crazy. Hang on a second. I know where it is on the side of the page. 1 Corinthians 16, 9, 8 and 9. That's what it was. 1 Corinthians 16, 8. He, says, he said, these um, saints in, in, uh, in Corinth, they, they want... They, they, they have it in their heart to, to, to give a gift. He goes, but I'm going to stay here. I'm going to be bringing that gift to Jerusalem, but I'm going to remain here till Pentecost in Ephesus. By the way, that's where Paul wrote the book of Corinthians in Ephesus. Now, I know for you, 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 you students, 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians were actually written before the book of Romans. Why they put it backwards in order, I don't know. Just makes it more things for me to remember. But... It's just the way it goes. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9, that's where Paul says the Macedonians had it in their heart, even though they were poor. He says, and they suffered much affliction, yet in their deep poverty, they had great liberality with their giving. These, these saints that were persecuted said, but we heard the other guys are persecuted even worse. So why don't you take this love gift, Paul, back to those poor guys? What a heart of, you know, just, I mean, it's funny to me how sometimes the poorest of people give the most. It, that's how the Macedonians actually were. They were not the rich ones of the day. And yet when they heard that those saints in Jerusalem were suffering, they said, let us help them out. You, you wanted to, you're going back there, right? Because you're on this journey. When you go back, would you take this gift for us to them? Give it to them so they could be, you know, know that... The, and, and turn with me to Romans. I'll just end here for today so you can, in your mind, be ready for next week. He says, he says Paul says, I, I'm planning on coming to you whenever I go to Spain, he says, but I, I hope to see you in passing and to be helped on my way there by you when, when I first enjoy your company for a while. But now I'm going to Jerusalem serving the saints. He says, for Macedonia and Achaia have been pleased to make a contribution to the poor among the saints in Jerusalem. And yes, they were pleased to do so, and for they said they are indebted to them. For if the Gentiles have shared in their spiritual things, then they are indebted to minister to them in material things. And therefore, uh, when I finish this and I put my seal on the fruit of theirs, I will go by way uh, of you to Spain. For I know when I come to you, I will come in the fullness of the blessing of Christ. Now, he says, I urge you. I urge you, brethren, by, the, by our Lord Jesus, by the love of the Spirit, to strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. He says that, that I may be rescued from those that are disobedient in Judea, and that my service for Jerusalem may prove acceptable to the saints, so that I might come to you by the will of God and find refreshing rest in your company. He actually asked them to pray that it would work out that he could come to see them in Rome. You know, and that he was hoping he'd, he'd pass on his way to, his intent was to go to Spain, right? You can see it here. Maybe those Spaniards need Jesus. Pretty sure they do. Heard about them, guys. They're a pretty rough group, you know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there and tell them about the Lord too. And I'll stop by and see you Italians on the way, you know. So he's, you know, I mean, that's the Romans, right? He's going to go see the Get the Italians, get the Spaniards, we'll get them all, the, the Latin people to know about Jesus. And this is, this is Paul, what he's up to. This is his thinking. Now, can anyone tell me, did Paul go to Rome on a missionary journey? Some of you go in. Is this a trick question? The, the answer is, he went to Rome. It wasn't a missionary, well, it is a missionary journey, technically, but not because it was voluntary. He's going to get back to Jerusalem. He's going to get arrested. And he's going to finally, at one point, there's a, there's a threat on his life in the book of Acts. 
he his nephew finds out about it, tells Paul. Paul has a sister there, and, and, and his little nephew hears that these men have taken a vow to kill this guy, Paul. And so he brings word to Paul in jail, and, and Paul says, go tell the commander what you just told me. And the commander has to guard Paul's life. And then Paul has to go and make his defense before the authorities, and then gets him before Agrippa. And finally, you know, he, it's not really working, so he goes, I appeal to Caesar. This doesn't work out so good for Paul. Paul spends two years in jail in Jerusalem only to be followed by, well, you appealed to Caesar? Too bad you appealed to him. I could have let you go, but but since you, you appealed to Caesar, to Caesar you go. In other words, the new guy was like, I'm cleaning house. Jail's too full. Send a guy. I, he wants to go to see Caesar. Send him to Caesar. So he gets sent to Caesar where he spends two years in prison In Rome. Now he's he's told to have a little bit of how do I say like not not like be like kind of a house arrest, I guess we'd use the term. Like he's allowed to have visitors in Rome. He's allowed to have people bring him stuff. He's allowed to, you know, communicate. But Paul Paul's been in two years of his life there in Rome and even though it was his, his desire to go to Rome, he had it when he wrote this letter. 50 AD, he, he, he's writing this um, in 58 AD, this book of Romans, desiring to go there, not knowing that he's going to spend from mm, 65 to, well, well no, wait, he, from 60 to 62, he'll spend in prison there. Then they'll let him go for a couple years, only to rearrest him and then behead him. 60, 67 A.D., age 59, by the way. Now, uh, just, just trivia, he spends from age 38 to 41 on his first missionary journey. This is, um, if you like the, the timeline, 46 to 49 A.D. He spends age 42 to 44 on his second journey, age 45 to age 50, Five years, by the way, on that third journey. The one he wrote, the book of Corinthians, the first Corinthians, second Corinthians, Romans. That was all on his third missionary journey. But Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, all those prison epistles, they don't come until the fourth not missionary journey. The one that in your Bible says, Paul's journey to Rome, incarcerated. That's where he'll write those epistles. From age 52 to 54, from a Roman prison, he will write some of the most powerful words of his life. And then later, a couple years later, they'll let him go, only to rearrest him and behead him at age 59. Now, when, when, when I read this, I go, man, this guy, he desired, and this is the part I never saw before. He desired to go see these brethren. And I'll show you next week in detail. I mean, naming the people that he had acquaintances with by name, different things, you know, that he had hoped that he could encourage them in, some really powerful things he wants to encourage them in their faith in, and nev not knowing that God had a whole plan orchestrated that we, you know, we get the, we get this, we get the cheat, hindsight, 2020, wow, he thought he was going to go do this and go to Spain, and instead God was going to get him locked up in Rome, he would get to Rome. But we wouldn't have Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, right? Those letters, those, are those good letters? I mean, for our faith, they're, they're those short and sweet, not like my preaching. Don't worry, I don't preach long at all. You guys, if you think I'm long-winded, you should have heard Paul preach. He preached so long, he preached until midnight, and there was a kid on the third story, right in the book of Acts. What happened to the kid in the windowsill? He, he falls asleep in the windowsill. From the third floor, falls down on the ground, die, he dies. Paul, Paul doesn't get the clue. Your preaching killed the kid. You went too long, Paul. Not Paul. Paul just goes over, lays hands on the kid. Kid comes back to life. He hands the kid to his parents. Everything's okay. See, he's all fine. No bruises. All good. God healed him. And then, and then what did Paul do? Can anyone tell me Bible trivia? I'll end on this. 
goes back to preaching until the sun rises. So if you think I preach long, you're, you have no idea. This guy, he's not going to let some, some kid dying in the middle of his sermon interrupt the sermon. He just keeps... This is, this is a guy who really wants you to know that Jesus died for your sins. And wants you to know the sweetness of the power of God's Spirit, how His Spirit accompanies us, and, and, and how Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm with you. Now, how many, raise your hand. How many of you know that Jesus spoke those words? I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Lo, I am with you to the ends of what? Of the age. To the end of the years. I am with you. We should let those words just resonate in our hearts. The Lord is with us. No matter what we're facing, no matter what we're going through, the psalmist wrote it really well. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Aaron started this started off our sermon today with, uh, some of you might be going through, what do you call it? Crisis. Crisis. Tribulations. Tribulations. If you're not, he said you will be someday this week. <laughs> oh, you didn't say this week. Just <laughs> soon or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> prophet of doom? No, prophet of reality. Because the psalmist wrote, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art what? with me. He didn't say you're never going to go through a valley. You're never going to go through a dark time. He didn't say that. Yea, though I go through that deep, dark time of my life, I don't have to fear evil because the Lord is with me. And Paul knew the Lord was with him, but I didn't see this insight that even though he desired to go to Spain and he desired to go see these brethren that he had never met in Rome, and he wanted to further the gospel there. Do you think he knew the curveball that was going to happen when he went to Jerusalem? He did have, I think, an inkling by God's Spirit. He said, pray for me that I would be rescued from those that are disobedient in Judea and that my service for Jerusalem may prove acceptable to the saints. He had a, I think, a little, you know how sometimes the Holy Spirit gives you a little inkling like, this isn't going to go so good. Or this isn't going to be easy. Do, do you ever feel like God sometimes preps you for sometimes something that's coming by, by giving you the like little, I, how do I say it? What's, what's the right way to explain, express this? Like, like that little heads up, like brace yourself, like brace, you know, get prepare. It's, it's going to get a little rough. It's kind of like put the seatbelt on, tighten it, get ready for the bumpy road. I mean, sometimes in life we go to, Valleys, and it's bumpy. But what we have is that security of the Lord being our safety belt. He's the one going, I'm with you. I got you. You're not going nowhere. Nothing's going to, I got you. And yet Paul's going, could you guys pray for me? Because the brethren in Judea, and now how many years has he been out ministering? See, this is the part I didn't ever pick up on. His journey wasn't just a couple weeks for the first one, a couple weeks for the second one, and a couple weeks for the third one. Like, I'm thinking missionary journeys, right? I didn't factor in years of ministering to people. Years and years, and then revisiting the people you spent years ministering to to come back and spend more years. He's invested. And he wants to go to Rome but he's got to stop in Jerusalem to drop off a love gift. The only love gift we ever know about Paul ever receiving, and it wasn't even for himself. That's my kind of guy. He's like, he would take the contribution, but not, they, they, they sent love gifts for him when he was in prisons and stuff, and he'd say, thanks for the gift, but, you know, I, I really, I learned to be content with whatever I have. And, 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 but I, I do thank you. He, he was polite, you know, I thank you. And I, and, 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 I, and I'm even more grateful for the increase that will come to your account in heaven for you giving. Because he, he, he said he learned from the Lord Jesus it is more blessed to do something than something. Do you anyone? To give than to receive. He says it's more blessed to give than receive. He says, I learned this from the Lord. It's more blessed to give. Paul liked to give. 
Now, only me and Dot have this problem. We, we love giving. We just, the receiving part where we have to work on. You know, when you, when, when you have to be in a place where you're humbled so much you have to receive, I don't like that place. Does anyone else like that place? I mean, I'm just asking. But I'm learning in the Lord that if you stay humble, you can have some pretty cool blessings when you just... And what I didn't realize is what Paul was saying. You're letting the other person get the blessing from God because when they give, the Bible says whenever you give, it will be given to you. So what if you have to be the one that receives so that the other person gets the blessing of participating in giving like God wants them to. It's a cool thing to do. But we don't always, well, just the prideful ones of us don't like to have to be humble and be in a place where I need you to give or I'm going to sink. You know, we, we don't like to accept. We would rather just give. Right, Dot? She didn't even say anything. She just nodded. It's a new day. I better end there. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for being a God that can direct our steps even when we don't know what lies ahead. Even when you call me to this island, Lord, I remember Joan Stebbins asking me, how, how long will you stay? And the only answer you gave me to tell her was, I'll stay as long as you tell me. And she didn't like my answer. She wanted me to say forever or for a long time, at least a couple decades or something. Lord, and you've kept me here almost 25 years. So I want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blessing of letting me to be called to Hawaii. What a cool calling to have from you. Help me continue to do it faithfully. Thank you for my son and my, my children on this Father's Day, my girls. Lord, I just pray for all of the dads here and the single moms playing dad. They get to wear two hats. You would just pour out blessings from heaven on this day, Lord. We celebrate earthly Father's Day, but we want to acknowledge you as our heavenly Father. Thank you, God, for being the God and Father of us all. And for the ones that, the ones that, are, that don't know you in that, in that way, what you said we can call out to you, Abba. The Hebrew for dada, daddy. We can call you our father. Lord, I pray that you would, you would introduce them to this saving faith through your son. That they too could call out to you and have you be their heavenly father. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the beautiful breeze. Thank you for the gorgeous wallpaper you give us on a beach in Hawaii. We just give you praise for all these things. Be with us now. Be with us and fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your comfort, Lord, that you're with us in everything we're going to face. Lord, I'm so grateful that you're with us. Just go with us now. As Aaron would say, the Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. And may he give you peace. May, may your peace reside in our hearts as we go to face this week. I ask it in Christ's name. And everyone that agree with me said, Amen. Would you stand with me? I'll sing a closing song and send you off in the joy of the Lord. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.